Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner and operator of Actually Diet Art by Science, and this is the conclusion. This is part three of the um, flying video that we have here. And really, I just wanted to give you guys uh, two tips, which I think I uh, failed to mention in my first video. So, first, um, I think I'm just going to recap how to get this yarn onto the drop spindle. Here. So I'm doing this butterfly walk. Pinky thumb, pinky thumb. This is just a reminder for you guys who have already seen this and um, and a quick explanation for those of you this is the first video you're watching of mine. So there are a couple ways that you can wind on yarn to make sure that it doesn't slip off the spindle. The first way is to go up and down like this. I actually prefer this over my original method because um, what would happen is yarn would get embedded. So I used to just twist it on like this. So it would go slowly down. So when you looked at it like this, you would have all these lines, uh, horizontal lines. But what I found would happen is not only would the yarn get stuck in there, but um, sometimes if I didn't build it up correctly, it would, um, I don't know, it would sort of like get a little bit on the looser side and then all of a sudden be like poof and it would like pop off this way um, if there wasn't enough fiber on the top or it would do the opposite direction if there was um, not a lot of fiber at the bottom, which usually there, usually it tapers down towards uh, the end of the shaft. So, um, I like using this method instead, but you can also just group them together and uh, eliminate that problem. Oh, good, it happened. All right, this was the uh, other thing. I was I was actually hoping to get it on air. So this, you see how this looks very loose now? It's because it is. And you look at the hook. What is going on there? <laughs> So what happens um, when you're plying yarn or let's say the cop fills up and it's really fat um, or too big for the world to handle, what's going to happen is it's going to uh, loosen and pop off from the cop and then that extra is going to sort of wind itself around the hook. So I'll tell you why that's the, the case here. Um, you can see how on here the the notch is vertical right you want to line up the yarn so that it goes into that notch vertically so if I'm here at the bottom oh gosh <laughs> I'm really bad with mirrors too <laughs> so you see the notch there I'm going to put, put oh. you have to use both hands so I'm going to try to keep the yarn here at the bottom and then come straight up as much as I can from that point. Hold it, hold it over the notch with my thumb. Like so. So it comes up more from the bottom straight up to the notch rather than um, how I had the yarn uh, when it did, the, did that thing. If I have it wrapped around the whirl like this, It's basically the same thing, right? I'm, I'm not really changing anything except for this angle. So instead of coming more uh, straight up from the bottom, it's coming at a steeper angle here. And what's going to happen is it's going to rock it out of the notch a lot easier, especially uh, with applied yarn because it's usually a little bit fatter than the notch is on most whorls. So it's going to pop out of here, and then you can see how once it comes out it's going to release the tension on the yarn and it's going to start coming up around the hook like this that's exactly what happened okay oh my gosh got a little bit of a mess <laughs> it's okay I got it I got it figure it out All right. A little bit more twist in here, and then we're gonna start over like we, uh, like we never messed up. Starting anew. 
All right. All the way down to the bottom, all the way back up. If if you find that um, you don't have enough yarn to go all the way up, back down, and then back up again for the hook, what you can do is go up to like the middle, back down a little bit, and then back up. It doesn't have to be all the way at the bottom, but you want it to be more towards the bottom because uh, it'll make this step easier. I gotta figure this out here. What is what is going on? Okay, got it. No more problems. <laughs> All right, we're going counterclockwise to get that twist in there. And catch it before it does its uh, back twist thing. Take it off the hook, and it's totally fine. Like. You don't always have to go up and down, up and down. You can go up a little bit, you know, maybe just past center and then back down again, right? And then you can go all the way up, down to the middle, back up a little bit, back down. And that's just so that you can get uh, the timing of, or the placement, I guess, I guess it's more like placement, the placement of the yarn so that it goes into that groove straight up from the bottom instead of from near the top. See? I don't know. I should have picked a different color other than brown. Maybe something like one was white and the other one was black so you guys can see uh, actually what's going on. Hopefully you can see that though, how it's... Oh, not that piece, this piece. So you can see how it's coming up from the bottom at a more slender angle. More slender? I don't know what that means. You know, straight up from the bottom rather than at a very sharp angle. That's just really the tip I wanted to uh, give you guys. So, anyway, if you liked this tutorial series, um, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have um, other questions that I haven't addressed in any of my videos, or you know, there's an angle that I put the spindle at, or of the camera at and uh, you still can't see what the heck it is I was trying to explain. Or if I did all my yammering and you still don't understand what I'm talking about, please let me know. And if it's something that I haven't already addressed, I'm going to make a video about it because I figure if you have this question, then there's probably a lot of other people who have this question as well. So I want to make sure that um, this information is available publicly. publicly so also, it cuts down the amount of time I have to write emails. <laughs> I've got like 15 email accounts, and sometimes it's really difficult to manage them all. <laughs> anyway, so um, like I said, if you like this video series, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Any other things that I've mentioned, like Facebook, Twitter, etc., you can find in the description below. Um, you can also send me comments or other questions, ideas for further tutorials. Or, you know, like I said, if you have no idea what I'm talking about still, uh, that's totally fine. And feel free to send me an email or a post below. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye!